once you start your live production, you'll be entered into the live production environment. Let's go ahead and take a look at the layout of the interface and how everything works together. The interface is broken down into three sections. The monitoring section here along the top, the live switching section here in the center, and a modular tab-based interface here along the bottom. The monitoring section will allow you to see the eight external video sources that are coming in live to the TriCaster in full frame rate video previews. There are also monitors for the two network inputs. The network inputs allow us to bring in external sources, either the display of an external computer or the output of that computer if it's running a new tech software like live text. There are also two digital disk recorders or DDRs that you can monitor the output of those two devices here. We have a stills and a titles player. There's a monitor for what's happening on the effects bus and then a large preview and program monitor. Now this portion of the interface is scalable both left and right by grabbing this center bar that separates the small monitors from the two large preview and program monitors. So you can grab that bar right in the center and you can drag left and right to scale this interface. Now if you do scale the interface and you want to get back to the default setting, double clicking on that line will reset that to its default position. You also have the ability to scale the interface horizontally, getting rid of the monitors and just leaving all of the control surfaces available here. And this can become handy if you're using the multi-view monitor as the second DVI monitor attached to the TriCaster. Again, if you want to get back to the default position, double clicking on that line will reset the interface to its default position. Now, this portion of the interface can be modified on the fly, and you've got tabs along the top allowing you to look at just the eight external sources that are coming in, to look at just the six internal sources available in the TriCaster, or to look at the waveform monitor and vector scope. Now, when you're working with the scopes, again, remember, you can scale this portion of the interface to get a nice large scope and a nice large preview area. And you do have the ability to use this pop-up right here to look at program out on the scope, to look at preview on the scope, or to look at something that's on the effects row. So you could be looking at video that's coming in on the effects row here and not adjusting what's happening on preview and program, but still be able to see this video and work with it on the scopes before you take it to preview or program. Again, once you've got everything adjusted and you're happy with it, you can go back to this view, double click on this line, and it will reset the interface back to its default position for you. One of the most important things that you need to take into consideration during a live production is time. The start of the production, when it's supposed to end, and what the actual time is during the production can all be very important pieces of information that you need during that live production. The TriCaster has two different types of production clocks available within the interface. The production clocks in the main interface are found right up here, and you have your main production clock, and then you have a countdown clock. And to configure these clocks, you click on the gear right next to them, and this allows you to subtract 12 hours. This is a 24-hour clock, so if you want to go to normal uh, time, 12-hour clock time, you can subtract 12 hours, or you can work in the 24-hour clock or military time. And then down here, you have the ability to engage the countdown clock. Now, if neither one of these is turned on, you just get a single clock. But as soon as you say you want to have the uh, secondary production clock, it allows you to set a start and an end time to your production. So you can left click and you can drag on these. And we can say the production is going to start at a specific time, let's say right around 5, and then the production is going to end, uh, let's go around 7. And then you get a countdown. And this clock is going to count down to the start of the production if the time is before the actual production time. Now, once the production has started, this becomes a countdown clock to the end of the production. Now, not only are these clocks available here, but these clocks are also visible on the multi-viewer. You do have the ability to attach a second monitor, and we talked about this in the hardware overview. You've got your main interface out, and then you've got your multi-view, and that's a second DVI monitor. It can be used for a variety of things, but one of the things that is used for most of the time is a multi-viewer, and it takes all of the previews from the main interface 
offloads them onto the second interface. And again, it's very nice that you can scale the main interface. You could put all of your previews over onto the multi-viewer and then get rid of the previews off the main interface if you'd like. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we configure the multi-viewer. Once the multi-viewer is attached, you can go to the little gear right here above your program out window, and you've got three tabs. And one of those tabs is for the multi-viewer. This gives you a proc amp for that multi-viewer, the ability to actually adjust the video levels on what's going out on that DVI monitor, and the ability to configure what's going out that multi-view port on the back of the TriCaster. Now, right now, it's set to our multi-viewer. And the multi-viewer, again, will show all of the inputs that are coming into the TriCaster that we have our monitors for, a nice big preview and program, and very large production clocks down in the lower right-hand corner, both the time of day production clock in red and the countdown production clock in yellow. Now, this can be configured a number of ways. Back on the main interface, we can use this pop-up, and we can choose to just look at the external sources. So again, the multi-viewer now is only going to show the eight external live video sources coming in. It can also be configured to show the, just the internal sources. And again, it's going to show the two network inputs, the two DDRs, the stills, and the titles players. You also have the ability to set it to show program output. This is going to be a program out in DVI format, perfect for feeding a projector natively with a DVI signal instead of feeding a projector a regular video signal. You also have the ability to make this into a preview output. Now it's a full preview monitor outside of the TriCaster's interface. You also have the ability to run the effects row out this secondary multi-view DVI output. Now this is interesting in that you can now run a separate switch out the effects row and this has no bearing on what's coming out of program out. So this technique allows you to run two separate video switches from one TriCaster. Perfect for feeding side screens with extra information during a live production and then having a main screen back behind the presenter. You also have the ability to do preview and program side by side. And again, you get nice large versions of the production clocks and you can also do a nice large version of the waveform monitor vector scope. So a real big version of the video and then nice big versions of the scopes to work with. Now that you have the interface configured, let's take a look at setting up the video inputs that you have connected to the TriCaster. Each input can be configured on an input by input basis. And notice as you mouse over any of the input monitors here, you see a little gear highlight up in the upper right hand corner. This gear allows you to get to the configuration for that input. There are two tabs. We're going to start on the input settings, and there's a pop-up for selecting the resolution and the format that the video is coming in. So again, 1080, 720, SDI component, you can bring standard def in, composite, YC, different aspect ratios, 4x3, 16x9, and you can change this on an input-by-input -input basis. Each input can be a different resolution and a different format. Now, you also have some proc amp controls allowing you to adjust video levels and some white balance controls for adjusting white balance. Always white balance your camera at the camera before a live production. Don't try and white balance your cameras from these controls. You want to make sure that you're feeding the TriCaster the best possible video signal that you can and use these internal controls to do minor tweaking. Don't use them as your be-all, end-all control of the video that's coming in from the camera. Make sure the camera is feeding the best possible signal. Within the configuration panel, you also have the tab for Live Mat. And this is our matting system that allows you to remove any color from behind the talent, so green screen or blue screen. And it also has some cropping controls, allowing you to crop things out of the scene. And this is uh, very useful when you're doing the matting because very often there might be something left in the scene that's not getting keyed out that you can very easily remove just by cropping. Now you've got a left crop, a right crop, a top, and a bottom. And you can left click and you can drag these interactively. I'm working with input number one here with Rex, and you can see if I uncrop it, you can see Kiki in half of that shot. But again, I can crop in from that side, 
and just leave Rex in there and I can get Kiki's hands out of the shot so we don't have to worry about it. Now again, you can crop down from the top, you can crop up from the bottom, and you can crop in from the right side as well.